Shalom, beloved. A word. Someone asked me a question based on my previous video about Old versus New Testament. And so I gave them, them an answer. And when I thought on it, spirit was share it. Share it with all of them. Because many people are confused regarding certain events, certain things that went on in the New Testament, as though these same circumstances weren't already established in the old. So once again, I'm going to bring this as a continuance to the previous video. However, I'm answering a question. What question am I answering? Was the fivefold ministry that is written about in Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 11, also going on in the Old Testament, as it's spoken about in the New? All right. So first, we're going to talk about Ephesians 4, 11. Just summarizing. And he gave some to be apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, some pastors and some teachers. This is in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 11. The question was, that's New Testament. Show me where it happened in the Old Testament. So, what the Lord gives, he gives for the entire group. It's not, this knowledge is not for one person. Although when I answered the question, it was one person I was speaking to. But I realized, I believe a lot of us don't have that information correct. So I'm just going to give this Old versus New Testament. Fivefold ministry was it in the Old Testament? All right. The first one we're going to talk about, and he gave some to be apostles. The word apostle in the English language originates from the Greek. It's called apostolos, which meant a messenger, one that is sent. Okay. This is not a title made for so called Christianity. Okay, it is a messenger. It's translated, the English translation of the Greek word apostolos is apostle. Okay, but it's translated and it means he that is sent, messenger. You will find it in 2 Corinthians 8, chapter 8, verse 23, and Philip, chapter 2, verse 25. It is translated as messenger, okay? Now, one of the things, again, the question was, were there, was there the fivefold ministry in the Old Testament like it was the New Testament? Now, remember, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, here a little, there a little, all right? The word apostle, Again, I told you it derives from its Greek word, apostolos. Even though you can't find that word in the Old Testament, okay, the term messenger is throughout the Old Testament because apostles, apostle is simply the English version of the Greek word apostolos, which means messenger, he that is sent. When you look in the book of Haggai, Haggai was known as the messenger of the Lord. Okay, centuries before apostles in the New Testament. Haggai 1.13, the priests who worked in the temple were also known as messengers of Yah. The book of Malachi chapter two, verse seven. The scripture says that many messengers of God or Yah were sent before the Babylonian exile. Second Chronicles verse 36 chapter 36, verse 16. So you had messengers throughout the Old Testament. 
messengers was a way of calling them apostles because in reality, the word apostle, remember, is just a translation from the Greek word and the meaning of that Greek word apostolos is messenger, he that is sent. So we know when we look at the fivefold ministry in Ephesians chapter four, verse 11, that there were apostles, messengers in the Old Testament. Now we're going to go to the prophet. We know of many prophets in the Old Testament, so we know there were prophets, all right? Many people don't know, or they may not have that distinction between, between the prophet and the seer, the prophet and the seer, because you had two types of prophets, okay? You had the one who speaks, okay? Um, and you also had the seer, one who sees, all right? I'm trying to, how do I break this down? A prophet is a knob, okay? If you look in First Chronicles chapter 25, verse 1, a prophet is a knob. That's their name. A seer is a chosa, a ra'a, or a roe, okay, and they're called a seer. A seer not only sees visions, but they see secrets, okay? They see secrets. And just so you understand and back that up by scripture, I'm going to quote something from the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 7. Surely the Lord Yah does nothing unless he reveals his secrets, all right, to his servants, the prophets, okay? Seers, they see with their eyes or perceive with their mind, okay? They will see with their natural, spiritual, and mental eyes. Okay, they see in the past, they see in the present, they see in the future, they see into the spiritual. Life. Okay, so you have prophets and seers. Every prophet is not a seer, but every seer is a prophet. All right, now we just covered apostle, prophet. Now we're going into evangelist, evangelist. Okay, because there's a lot of detail to this. I'm just trying to break it down. Was the fivefold ministry that's spoken of in the New Testament in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 11, was that fivefold ministry functioning in the Old Testament? Now let's go to the evangelists. Okay. All right. I'm not going to try to pronounce that word for it because there are three Greek words um, closely connected. And basically the evangelist is one who brings good news. Evangelist means a preacher bringer of good news. Okay. Mark Matthews chapter 11, verse five is a good example of this. The blind shall receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Okay, good news. All right, but to uh, break it down, and I'm talking about evangelists. Now we're going to find out if the Old Testament had evangelists in it. In the Old Testament scriptures, we see Isaiah is known as one who preaches good news. The prophet Isaiah, he's known as one who preaches good news. The book of Isaiah, chapter 61, starting at the first verse, was also quoted by Yeshua in Luke, four, chapter 4, verse 18. The word used by Yeshua in Luke 4:18. For to preach the gospel is none other than, I, I can't say that word, okay? But here's the thing. When Yeshua first stepped out, he picked up the book of Isaiah 
starting from chapter 61 and began to preach the good news. He was using the Old Testament of the prophet Isaiah. Okay, forgive me if I'm kind of choppy with this thing because I'm, I'm, I'm showing you how it was already going on. That's the evangelist. He who brings the preacher of good news, good news. And the prophet Isaiah was known as one who preached good news, okay? So much so, he was quoted by Yeshua HaMashiach, okay? Now, we're going to pastor. This is the fourth one. We've already covered apostle, which is a messenger. We've covered the prophet and the, the different kinds of prophet. You have the Nabi, you have the Chosa, which is the Ra'a, the Seer. So you have the prophet, you have the seer, okay? We also covered the evangelist. He who brings good news, good news. Now we're going into the pastor, okay? The word pastor is connected to shepherd, both in the New as well as the Old Testament, okay? More often than not, it's, it's translated as shepherd throughout the body. Okay, when you look at these words, shepherd versus pastor, okay, the English translation of the Old Testament contains the word pastor many more times than the New Testament, which contains it only once. It's only once mentioned the word pastor in the New Testament. And that's in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 11. But when you look in the Old Testament, okay, it contains the word pastor many more times. The book of Jeremiah, it's, it's multiple times throughout Jeremiah. I don't even want to quote all of them. Okay. Um, they're also, the actual meaning in the Hebrew, which is translated in these instances, is shepherd. The word shepherd itself is used in the capacity of leader in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 56, as well as Isaiah chapter 63. Okay, so we know shepherd, pastor, these words are interchangeable, leader of the flock. All right. Finally, we see teacher. Finally, we see teacher and instructor generally or specifically a master, a teacher, okay? The Greek word is translated as teacher, okay? And the Greek word which is translated as teacher is in most cases translated as master. Usually it's pertaining to Yeshua. However, the true meaning of the word is instructor, teacher, all right? It has another Greek name to it, which I'm sure some people will say, but I'm just going to say teacher, okay? Because that Greek name is kind of hard to pronounce, okay? Now, again, we're covering that five-fold ministry in the New Testament, asking, is it in the Old Testament? Let's see. We're at the teacher, okay? Now, the Old Testament scriptures also prove that there were many teachers appointed by Yah before the time of Yeshua. Moses was a teacher appointed by Yah, Exodus chapter 24, as well as Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5. There were appointed people who went around the land of Israel teaching Yah's word. It's in 2 Chronicles, starting in chapter 17. The tribe of Levi were instructors of Yah's word and his way. You see that in Deuteronomy chapter 17, chapter 24, chapter 33, Second Chronicles chapter 30, and Second Chronicles chapter 35. The priests, Aaron's sons, were mainly appointed to teach Yah's people. You find that in the book of Levi chapter 10. Uh, in Second Chronicles chapter 15, Second Kings chapter 12. Samuel, who was a judge of Israel, was also a teacher. 
First Samuel chapter 12, verse 23. Nehemiah and Ezra were also teachers. You find that in the book of Nehemiah chapter eight, verse nine, along with a host of others, okay? It was a commandment of Yah to teach everyone in Israel, man, woman, and child. That's in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 31, starting at the 11th verse to verse 13. All right. I'm just showing you how what you see in the New Testament, because a lot of this is translated. And you think it's not in the Old Testament. It's right there. And they were clearly functioning in those offices. A lot of things have been obscured, particularly since. Uh, church Hannity got a hold of it, but now I want to be fair to many of the churches and uh, especially Yasharel's churches that we came up in. When you look at the history of how we were allowed to learn the scriptures, many of the pastors were only allowed to speak what the so-called slaveholders would allow them to speak. Many times they wanted them to speak scriptures that kept the enslaved Yasharel subservient to them. Okay. They would also try to tell us we were from Ham and it's just a whole issue with that crap. Okay. Once the black Yasharel pastors, Hebrew, started speaking, you had many whites that would stand in the back of the church. They would check to see what was being taught, what was being said. So a lot of it got misconstrued and it was not always the intention of the pastors. The other thing, because you got to understand some of these same said people <clears throat> that the scriptures were in the hands of, I'm talking the Edomites, the Babylonians, those who were not of Yashorel, even though you read in the book of Ephesians that he gave some to be apostles, messengers, okay, prophets, <clears throat> evangelists, pastors, and teachers. We find in this country a lot of times they gave a lot of to die to the pastors and they ignored the power of the prophets or the evangelists or the teachers. Although one of the other things is they, they work interchangeably. They work interchangeably because the number one goal is to get God's word out there to the people and to lead them and guide them. All right. <clears throat> it's not unusual for a pastor, a shepherd, to have a prophetic ministry, the spirit of the prophecy being on him that he or she prophesied or an apostle, it works interchangeably. Some people prophesy, but they don't function in the office of a prophet. Meaning some people have that mantle on them. They are anointed by the most high in that office. You also have Lesser versus greater prophets within that fold. But to finish, beloved, because I don't know if this is all over the place. Old versus New Testament. The fivefold ministry was there. It was already established. They just did not call it the fivefold ministry. It was functioning according to the manner that Yah wanted his name, his glory, and his people to know, to be led, to be taught what he wanted for them to know, be led, and be taught. Beloved, I hope this answers a question. Again, it, it, it can get very detailed, but that fivefold ministry, like I said, in many cases, some people ignore it. Some people will, now there are also false prophets. Let's be clear. There are some people that are false prophets. They are not called by Yahweh. But we know there are also false leaders. Okay. But I'm just answering the question. Old Testament, New Testament. Okay. That fivefold ministry 
was functioning. Completely. It was functioning. At the same time, Yahuwah was the complete embodiment of it, which isn't shocking when you look at it. He's the word of the most high. He comes in the volume of the book. So it makes sense that all of those functions were in him. He was that good shepherd. He was that master, that teacher. He did prophesy. He brought that message. He did, um, did I cover them all? Messenger, prophet, evangelist. He brought that good news. Oh, yes, he did. He brought that good news. Pastor, that's the shepherd. He's the good shepherd. He's likened unto David. Okay? And we know he's the teacher. He's the master. When you hear the word apostle and you think, well, Yeshua HaMashiach named the 12 apostles. No, actually that English translation, what he did, he, he chose 12 of his disciples to go out as messengers to take that message out to the people. Beloved, I hope this helps. I hope it clears up any questions that you have. Um, a word, beloved. Shalom.